Welcome students, I am Hari Ram Devkota, your teacher at Burain County School. Today I am going to discuss something related to the modern periodic table, some of the features present in it with the help of a portion of periodic table including 20 elements from attic number 1 to 20. It's simply because your syllabus covers the elements from atomic number 1 to 20. Here is how we can see the small portion of the periodic table. So, dear students, right now, I have shown you a portion of the periodic table containing 20 elements in which the extreme left top part contains hydrogen and the extreme right top part contains helium and at the bottom line on the left side you can see K that is potassium and Ca that is calcium. Now let me provide the atomic number for all these elements. Now you can see the atomic number being written in green color dear students whereas you can see in deep pink color the symbol of elements they are there as they were before and again I would like to add the electronic configuration of all these elements in different cells let's have a look at it so dear students the light blue color with comma wherever you can see indicates the different number of electrons in different cells of those particular atoms of those elements. This is how electronic distribution in different cells can be clearly understood with the help of these light blue labels that you can see inside all the boxes in which the elements are shown. Now let us analyze with the number of valence electrons in all these atoms that we have been discussing with. I want to tell you something over here right after this electronic configuration I would like to write something over here that in this first row that contains only hydrogen and helium you can see that there is only K cell. There is only K cell. Likewise, starting from lithium up to neon that is in the second row we can see K and L cells present there. And in the third row students you can see there are three numbers separated by comma that is why you can see you have to understand that K, L and Yum cells are there and in potassium and calcium that is the fourth row you can see that you can easily understand that K, L, Yum and Yun these are the cells or the orbits that are present in the atoms of these elements. Right after this students Look at the first vertical column starting from hydrogen up to potassium. You can see over here that in hydrogen there is only one electron that is itself the single and the valence electron for hydrogen. In the same way lithium contains only one electron in its valence cell and you can Look at sodium and its electronic configuration as well you can see only one electron in its valence cell and potassium also contains only one valence electron right. That is why now let us write over here that number of valence electrons over here now let us understand number of valence electrons I have written E minus means electrons symbolically that is why in this case in this first column it is only one and in the second part let us have a look at it Very, beryllium has two valence electrons magnesium has 
two valence electrons. Calcium also has two valence electrons means altogether there are two valence electrons in this second vertical column. Likewise, let us have a look at it. Now, I want to go a bit thoroughly, simply have a look at it. The third column contains the elements with three valence electrons. The fourth one contains the elements with four valence electrons in their atoms. The fifth one contains, the fifth column contains five valence electrons in them. And the elements in the sixth column over here contain six valence electrons. The elements in the seventh column, they contain over here seven valence electrons in them. And excluding helium for a while, the elements in the last or the let's say rightmost side of this particular chart, they contain eight electrons in their valence cell. Now, there is a relationship with valency and number of valence electrons. Dear students, please have a look. Now, therefore, now I want to make you clear with this. Talking about valency, now, if the number of electrons in the valence cell is up to 4, according to the number of valence electrons, that much will be the valency for that atom. That's why in this first column, we can see only one valence electron. That's why the valency of all these elements is one. And in the second column, we can see two valence electrons in all the atoms. That's why the valency of all these elements, they have valency two. And likewise, the elements coming under this third column will have valency three and the elements coming under fourth column will have valency 4. However, there occurs a change in this rule. If the number of valence electrons is more than 4, under that case, the tendency of that particular atom to reach its octet electronic configuration by adding electrons from others will be very high. That's why how many electrons are not enough in order to complete the octet that will be judged. That's why we need to subtract the number of valence electrons over here from the octet number 8. That is 8 minus 5 will give 3. That's why the elements of this vertical column that we say this particular group will have valency 3. In the same pattern now for others on the right side also the same rule will apply. That's why octet number 8 minus number of valence electrons in this vertical column that we call a group that will give the number 2 in this case. And this is how the students the valency of these elements is 2. And on the other side talking about fluorine and chlorine in this vertical column in order to reach octet, only one electron is not enough. That's why one is, its, one is the valency of the elements in this group. And talking about the rightmost side that we even call the inner gases, octet number that is 8 minus number of valence electrons is also 8. This is equal to 0. That is 0 is the valency of all the elements that fall under the rightmost column or let's say the column of the group of inert gases. Now, in the same pattern, let us move on to the group number now. In order to find the groups, the students again you have to understand a relationship. What you need to understand is that for the number of elements that is there in your syllabus, what you need to understand is that generally a group is assigned with the reference of the number of electrons present in the valence cell. That is group is equal to number of valence electrons
that should be in Roman. plus the capital letter A. So, let us have a look at the number of valence electrons that you can see in this particular row students with the black ink. So, in this particular case, the first vertical column that we call the group, there is only one valence electron. That's why one in Roman format in capitalized letter is capital I. And then plus the rule follows over here that is a. So, I A is the group of these elements of the first column. In the same way, now let us follow the rule. The same rule applies for the rest of the columns as well that we have to call the groups now. So, in this second vertical column, you can see two electrons in the valence cell. Two in the romanized format is double I and the capital letter A. And in the same way students gradually the rest of the columns will be have the group number as given. 3 means triple I and then A, 4 means I V and then capital letter A, 5 valence electron means V and then capital letter A, 6 valence electrons means V I and then capital letter A, 7 valence electron means V double I and then A. And over here on the right side corner, there is a little bit uh, different case that we can see an exception. So, dear students, these are the group of inert gases that remain passive under normal conditions. And because of that reason, their group number is also assumed to be 0. So, it is not 8, simply we have to write it 0. And finally, let me discuss with uh, the pattern how we write the period. Let us understand something different. If you have to find the period number, simply the period number for a particular atom or of an element, let us say, is simply determined by counting the number of cells present in it. So, according to So, according to the number of cells, that is, period is equal to the number of cells present in an atom. That's why, let us again have a look. Period refers to the horizontal rows present in a particular periodic tail. So, that is what a period refers. So, hydrogen and helium Hydrogen and helium, they have only one cell that is already written here as K cell. That is why their period is 1. And the second row of elements, they have K and L cells. That is why their period is 2. The third row elements, they have K helium means 3 cells. That is why their period number is 3. And the fourth row elements, they have K helium and cells. That means they have 4 cells. That is why their period number is 4. This is how we can easily find out the group number and the period number of different elements. And accordingly, this is the pattern how the elements are arranged in terms of increasing atomic number in the modern periodic table. Higher than this, you will study in higher classes as well. And for your school level, this is what the syllabus covers. And I hope. It has been very much clear to you from this video that we have prepared today. Thank you.